Let's start off with the first part in the sort of topic, which is movement and locomotion in human. There are three main mechanisms in this part, which is arm bending, arm straightening, and leg movement. Arm bending is when the bicep contracts and the pull force is transmitted to the radius through the tendon. At the same time, the tricep relax. The radius is pulled outward, causing the arm to bend. Arm straightening, on the other hand, is when the tricep contracts and the pull force is transmitted to the ulna through the tendon. At the same time, the bicep relax. The ulna is pulled downward, causing the arm to become straight. Now, let's talk about leg movement. According to the textbook, leg movement begins when the right calf muscle contracts, lifting the heel. The ball of the foot pushes against the ground. At the same time, the bicep femoris contracts, bending the foot at the knee joint. This action causes the right leg to be lifted. As the right leg lifts the ground, the body weight is now supported by the left leg which is still on the ground. The quadricep femoris contracts to straighten the leg. After that, the tibialis contracts to bring down the heel. As the right, legs, as the right heel touches the ground, the body weight is now shifted to the right leg. This whole sequence is repeated by the left leg. Now, we proceed with the movement of swimming in fish. First, the fish vertebral column is flexible and can be moved from side to side by the contraction and relaxation of myotome, which is a W-shaped muscle segment. These antagonistic muscles act in opposite directions. This enables a fish to whip its tail as the myotome on the right contracts, the one on the left relaxes. The tail then will be whipped to the right. On the contrary, when the left myotome contracts, the right relaxes and the tail is whipped to the left. Alternating waves of contraction and relaxation occur along the myotome. The action causes parts of the body to move from side to side, pushing water backwards and sideways, and hence moving the fish forward. And the fins are used to control a fish's movement and direction. Next is a flying movement in birds. When the pectoralis major contracts, the pectoralis minor relaxes. The wings are pulled down and when the pectoralis minor contracts, the pectoralis major relaxes. The wings are pulled up. That takes advantage of the air pressure to keep them flying. Next, onto the creeping movement in earthworms. Firstly, the posterior longitudinal muscle contracts and the circular muscle relaxes. The earthworm becomes shorter and thicker. And second, the chitae at the posterior segment anchor to the ground while the chitae at the anterior segment release their hold of the ground. Third, the circular muscle, muscle at the anterior segment contracts and the longitudinal muscle relaxes. Thus, the earthworm becomes longer and thinner. And lastly, the front end at the anterior segment extends forward. Fourth, the chitae at the anterior segment anchor to the ground and the chitae at the posterior segment release their hold of the ground. And finally, the posterior segment shortened and pulled to the front. Lastly, in, grass, in grasshopper, there are antagonistic muscles which are flexor and extensor. They are attached to the near inner surface of the exoskeleton. For grasshopper leaping at rest, flexor at the hind leg contracts, pulling the leg towards the body. Hind leg is folded into a Z shape and it is ready to jump or leap. Second, the extensor contracts and the hind leg is straightened backwards. And lastly, catapult-like ejection as the hind leg projects its forward and up into the air, thus making it possible for grasshoppers to jump. Now, let's move on to the next subtopic which is subtopic 14.4, health issues related to human musculoskeletal system. The first disease or disorder in this subtopic is osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is a bone disorder characterized by weak bones that may break easily. As a person ages, the rate of calcium loss is higher compared to the rate of calcium absorption, causing a loss in bone mass or density. Among the contributing factors are lack of exercise and low intake of calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin D. 
Osteoporosis is common among women who have reached menopause because their estrogen level is decreased. Estrogen is involved in calcium metabolism whereby it helps the body to absorb calcium and reduce calcium loss from the bone. A low estrogen level can reduce bone cell density due to loss of calcium from bones. The next disease or disorder is osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is a soft bone condition due to lack of calcium, phosphorus and vitamin D. Osteomalacia occurs among adults, especially pregnant women. It is called rickets if it occurs among children. Rickets causes the softening and weakening of children's bone, resulting in bone defects. A common type of arthritis among the elderly is osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is caused by decreased synovial fluid and wear and tear of the cartilage in certain joints. The cartilage becomes thinner and the ligament shortens and loses some of its elasticity. Joints such as the knee joint become swollen, painful and loses some of its flexibility. Arthritis restricts daily life activities such as walking. The last and final disorder is scoliosis. The backbone of a scoliosis patient is bent to the side, forming an S or C shape when viewed from the back. Scoliosis may be caused by a genetic factor or abnormal growth of the backbone during puberty development. Practices to maintain a healthy musculoskeletal system. The first one is, we need to practice good body posture every time, either you are sitting, walking, lying or standing. Remember, don't slouch because this will exert pressure and misalignment to our vertebral column, resulting to bad blood circulation and also suppressing the nerves and our vital organs. Second, always wear proper attire which means comfortable and loose. We are also advised to wear shoes with low heels and cushion. With this, we can prevent injury to our vertebral column. Furthermore, we should exercise more. There must be some people still wondering why we need to exercise like So, by exercising, we can strengthen our joint structure, increase the flexibility of muscle and ligaments, and the most important part is that we can prevent injury to our vertebral column. Last but not least, practice balance diet. We should consume food rich in calcium, minerals, vitamin C and D. Why vitamin C and D? Because vitamin C is to increase our bone mass, whereas vitamin D is for calcium absorption.